Okay. This are the issue I believe is um, most commonly asked um, for the past maybe two weeks. Uh, the first issue is really to do with make. Some of you are uh, learned this already about how the make file really is. And some of you kind of still uh, confusing about how make file is, is helping us to do that. So I, I, I found a, um, a, a simple tutorial about make, which is really, really uh, simple. Uh, you probably can swallow it in, in 30 minutes. I share this on Facebook. Just, I just want to click it. So let's see what was that. Okay. This one. <clears throat> so I already put on, this is a simple tutorial about make. You can see that it's just like uh, um, less than two pages. It goes through some very simple example from the most simple type of make to talk about. Uh, let me make this a little bit larger so, so you can see better. Okay. So let me just go over this very quickly and then you can read it. And this is a uh, um, uh, very nice, uh, very simple tutorial. Um, so you can see this is a traditional way we're using uh, um, the GCC or you can change that to G++. It, it's, a, it's a line for you to compile. And then you can automate using a make file. And the make file has three regions if you haven't figured out. This part before the, before the column is called target. And this part after the target, after the, the target and the column is called dependency. And this part is called command. And, and just be careful that this space here is a tab key. Okay, it's a tab key then to the command. So that, that's what I have here is that this is a basic make is that if you, try to build the target, it would first try to build the dependency. And after the dependency uh, were built, then you fire the command. Okay, that, that's essentially what make file is doing. And then it, it gives you like a more and more complicated make file. This is the most simple make file. It's only have a one rule, it doesn't use anything. And then you can start to using macro. That's why I have been using for the make file I send you CC is equal to GCC or C++ or, or using the C flags, uh, which includes some of the uh, issue. And then we have um, uh, make file three, which is give you the separation compilation. Uh, and then it's getting more and more complicated. Okay, so, so that is um, the, the idea of a make file. Uh, the make file I share with you, I does not even use uh, make I does not even use this rule. This rule is, is very powerful. You can use it to compile all the code. Instead of writing like a five or six lines, you can do that. But the dependency part is a little bit complicated because you have a different type of dependency. Like in our case, different files have different dependency. So this part doesn't work as, as simple as this. That's why I didn't use this, this particular rule but the rest of that should be uh, similar. So this give you, in fact, if you just read up to this point, up to the, the make file number two example, you already should be able to master the make file uh, at least uh, for this, this course. That, that, that will be sufficient for you to do a lot of things, okay? Okay, that's the first issue. And that will relate it to the second issue that a lot of you still have trouble, say, uh, JSON, uh, JSON not found. Oh, sorry, this slide. Uh, JSON, JSON, JSON slash JSON.h not found. That's because in Ubuntu environment that uh, um, the installation process, um, it doesn't already include the JSON CPP in the, in the compiler's uh, include list. So you have to specifically to specify a minus capital I option, which is basically say, looking for this particular place for includes file, 
on top of everything else that the, the compiler already know. So when you have a minus i, the, uh, the compiler will first go to this place to look for any include file. Then it will go to the other place that is already specified. So adding this in the make file, uh, in this, uh, usually I do it after C flag because this is a compiler. C flag stands for compiler flags. And once you've done this, uh, it will be automatically uh, included. And don't include this part, by the way, this part is just, just here for, for, your, for your comment, okay? So that's, that's number uh, two issue. In fact, number one, number two, both related to <coughs> make file, but the number two is only apply to uh, the, the user for Ubuntu, which is including CSIF or uh, the, the Windows 10 WSL environment. You both have to do that, okay? All right, and then the other thing, which is um, a lot of you um, getting this uh, error uh, when you either try to link things together or the compiler say this one not found, okay? And a lot of case is, has to do with whether um, when you call a function when you, or when you declare a function, not declare, give a definition means that you implement a function, whether in the class definition you have a matching one over there. So sometimes uh, you might define a function, say get distance, but you didn't define get distance in the right uh, class and such that it, it, it cannot match. When it cannot match, it, it says, wait a minute, you're trying to define a function which is not declared in this particular class. I'm sorry, this is going to be an error. So there are two things. Number one, you should make sure that every member function you define in the class declaration and in the, um, in the implementation. So when I say declaration, I really mean, for example, um, um, person dot h. That's your declaration part of your um, C plus plus, and then the implementation is usually in person dot cpp. So whatever you have, those two function, they must match each other. The other typical example is hw three uh, server dot h and hw three uh, server dot cpp or you have hw3 client.h and not so much which hw3 client.cpp, but it has a match in, I believe in the, um, for example, shadow fly or shadow person.cpp because those files, they include hw3 uh, client.h. So, so whenever you have this include relationship, you make sure that there, they're matching with each other in terms of the declaration. I think most of you are doing well in terms of number of arguments. So right now it's about whether you have it there or not. Some of, sometimes you just forget to, to add that. That's okay. Which leads to the, uh, another issue I do want to point out to you is that <clears throat> for all the issue I, I saw you raised, I, I think those issue are um, are basically the, the compiler does or linker does provide um, um, an error message or warning message, try to tell you why they don't like it. Um, that's why they throw that error message. But the error message typically generated by the uh, G++ or GCC compiler, they're overwhelming. They're, they have so much, there's so much, it's a long line because they try to throw a lot of things. And so this is by experience, you try to read this message and try to see what was the keyword you should look for. What is the key reason for them to do this? And then for that key reason, what are the other things you need to provide? For example, I'm talking about matching uh, function declaration. If this is a compiler error, it usually say this particular function prototype, say shadow fly, colon, colon, get distance, for example. He said, this is not being declared. And then it will tell you usually one file, the where you call that, 
so so right now you you need to think about okay i'm actually get that message saying that well i don't have that declare uh should this be declared in the one of the .h file that's when you should look for that .h file whether you have it so that that is one scenario which the compiler gives you a syntax error and the other common way of looking at this matching function declaration is about linker when you're linking things together and it will tell you that uh, x86 underscore 64 architecture reference to whatever let me tell you which part is is actually doesn't help you very much when they say x dot x86 that part you can just neglect it i don't care what architecture i'm doing because you're not doing embedded system anyway so so that part the message is is irrelevant to be honest with you but when it says reference that reference keyword means that it try to access the object code or some kind of library it doesn't have it so when you when they provide usually when they say reference they usually say which function they need to call and you don't have it <clears throat> so at that time you might find out oh uh it tried to call a function called get distance and uh it couldn't find it so the get distance this string will be mentioned in that error message after the reference and that gives you a huge indication about why you're getting this linking error and at that time you typically go back to your make file to see if you have include all the element you should have include i mean for example there are two most common case for uh, for our student to get uh, um, this kind of linking error for homework assignment three. Number one, uh, the linking should include shadowfly.o and the shadowperson.o. If you see anything like um, a reference to shadow underscore person, column, column, whatever function, you know that, okay, there's somewhere this .o file needs to be included. It wasn't okay so you fix that through make file and the other very common way of doing the other very common uh problem is that it referred to a json library to a library which you are not familiar with and it's probably a json rpc or a micro httpd so which means that one of the um one of the um the minus l so let me show you this is what do i mean by library because some of you uh, even the tutorial i don't think they explain this part very well so let me let me open up the, the other file um, cd program <clears throat> okay if you look at my make file let me make this a little bit smaller if you look at my make file um so let me first tell you that what do i mean by the difference between compiling and linking okay compile linking different in the following sense if you see a rule it has a minus C flag, that means it's compiling. If it doesn't have a minus C flag, means it's linking. For example, this is all compiling, try to generate the object.o file. And the first rule doesn't have it is this, this line, HW3 server. You see that this line, I don't have that minus C flag. And this, this means I'm trying to link all these things together, all this one, two, three, four, and put that into this output name, this executable name called HW3 server. So just remind you again, this is called the target, this is called the dependency, and this is the command line to fire. Okay, and the thing is that all of this after this minus dash O HW3 server, everything here is object file. So I have a core object, which is represent transaction, person, and the core, dot O. And I have a shadow object, which is fly, 
underscore shadow dot o and fly uh sorry person uh, sorry shadow underscore fly dot o and the shadow underscore person dot o and then of course i have hw3 server dot o but the last part is i call the library it's a linking flag library so let's see where is my ld flags so ld flag is at the beginning here is my ld flag it, it's across one line so i use a backslash to link this two line together so here is a library i have json cpp micro httpd json rpc cpp common json rpc server json rpc client and then minus l c curl uh minus l curl so whatever you saw a minus l at the beginning that means the rest of them represent the library that there is certain place that the library will be hosted it will automatically link those library together so you can imagine if you miss just one of them uh it won't it won't reference everything it needs and then it will give you that kind of error saying that i'm sorry i tried to link for you but i'm missing this particular one okay so that that's that's the um, um a lot of um, uh, the common issue that you need to deal with it's about matching the, but you need to uh, be carefully reading the, um, the error or warning message. Okay, that will help you to do that. Okay, so several of you are, are, are learning the software development, trying to resolve the error and warning messages. And I, I know that uh, um, you, don't have a lot of experience dealing with this and sometimes it's really overwhelming. Uh, I, I would suggest you to try yourself to read the message and don't just uh, 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 just let it fly by your, your, your screen, but try to see if those message, uh, which part of that you think is irrelevant and try to pick the most important part and then try to Fix that yourself because because the the when you start doing that you actually start learning how to uh, develop uh, the, this kind of uh, software and and if you cannot do it no problem you you let TA or me know and we can take a look at your screen uh, you or you can let other students know who who might have have more experience dealing with those situation and then from that interaction then you will also learn how to in the future to deal with similar error or help other people to deal with that. Okay, so that's the first part. And the first four items I put it here are having to do with uh, error and warnings um, to prevent you <clears throat> to build the executable. But the next step, next level, the problem you will receive is that you start running the program but the program either failed or either uh is is not responding or give you some kind of uh runtime we call runtime error for example segmentation fault and and the other thing is that what what's bothering some of the student which is which is i completely understand is that it didn't give you an explicit message uh it doesn't work but it seems to be the result is kind of uh, uh, not, not very understandable. So um, for example, well, one of, not just one, many of the students told me that, well, how do I know my HW3 another, when the HW3 server is trying to contact HW3 another, how do I know that this really work? And how do I know HW3 really received the notification? And what you can actually do very, uh, uh, to just exercise, for example, if say HW3 another, uh, sorry, server is going to call get VSID from HW3 another. Let me just use an example here so you can know what I'm talking about. So I'm talking about this is that um, HW3 server program is trying to call get VSID to an object that's actually being hosted a HW3 another. 
Okay, that is a, that is a typical scenario we need to deal with. And, and the reason for you to, 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 to learn the following trick is that I want to know whether this is really happening. I want to know re really that HW3 does send the shadow object and HW3 and not really receive it. And whether the return is returning the right VSID. So I will do this is that before you do the call, you, do a, you, you put a print statement, print or CL, your favorite, that's fine. And you print that I'm actually making the call with maybe some argument. And then you want to see whether this one, you also print that HW3 another when the get VSID get called. So you will, you will have your code. So you can actually add a print statement to see if you actually, when, when this terminal, by the way, okay, some of you asked me, you, you really, to run this program, you need three terminals. One is running HW3 client, one running HW3 server, and the other one running HW3 another. So this terminal, you, you see the print, and this terminal, you also see the print, and this print, you might just print the VSID again, um, uh, which represent not just you receive this call, but also what value you're gonna return. And then you, you, you will print second time after you get the return value from get VSID. So with this three print statement, two from the HW3 server, one from the HW3 another, this three print statement all in the, uh, in the so on the, on the, another is actually inside the implementation of get VSID, but in the HW3 server is the caller, is the one call when you call that get VSID, one before, one after. With this three statement, you actually see the intermediate result. That will give you a, a, a really good confirmation that, <clears throat> that you actually get it done right. Number one, HW3 another does receive. Number two, the VSID from the HW3 another side is matching the value you got after the call. So this gives you a lot of more information and confidence about whether your program is doing the right thing or not. And by the way, some of you asked me, uh, how do I actually show your result is correct during the uh, submission? I said, if you add those print statements in the way I just described, that actually gives the people run the program also see this progress. And then that is a very good way to show that how your program works, okay? So I summarize uh, regarding uh, the, all the common issue that uh, I, I, I heard from uh, pretty much this covers everything, I think. Uh, I might forgot one of the two very unique situation, but this is the most common uh, question I got asked. <clears throat> okay, so having said that, uh, any question from, from the class? Yeah, I have a question. Sure, go ahead. It's kind of more of a, a specific one on error. And um, I saw some of these on PIAs as well, but mm -hmm. the answers weren't like too, I guess, detailed. Um, so I wanted to ask it. In homework three server dot CPP, like way towards the bottom, um, with uh, when we make an object from the my W3 server mm -hmm. class, mm -hmm. it says, cannot declare variable s to be of abstract type my server mm -hmm. you know what i'm what i'm talking about yes i know what you're talking oh. about yeah then i don't i don't really see how to fix it or what should i do next okay when you saw that um, um the, the, that that is another issue that that's uh, very commonly asked but it's also related to the matching of the function declaration and definition implementation so um, the, the reason you got that message is usually because you declare uh, some um, component, for example, in the, um, I wish I can uh, reproduce that arrow here, It'd be because I encountered the same arrow when I was developing my code. So it, it, it happened when I have the hw3 server.h, which is automatically generated from my JSON file. But when I did my hw3 server.cpp, 
I didn't implement all the function. In fact, I probably implemented the wrong function. It doesn't match with uh, HW3 server.h declaration. And when I had that, I will have exactly the error message you see, you saw. And when I implement this four function that I matching with my JSON, which then matching, of course, with my HW3 server.h, that error went away. Okay. Okay. I see. Yeah. yeah. If you still have that error, let me know. And typically, the um, let, let me tell you that this is how I help students resolve. The student have that error. I remind them, did you do this? Did you do this? And then eventually, uh, still cannot resolve. I just say, hey, why don't you send me your HW3 server.cpp and HW3 server.h. When I got this two file, I basically check how they match with each other. And then I usually be able to find out, hey, this particular place is not exactly match. And, and that's why you have it. And then after we, we, we make sure that those CPP and H file, they're in sync, they're matching with each other, uh, no problem that the code can be compiled link. Okay, I'll, I'll take a closer look, thank you. Okay, you're welcome. <clears throat> okay, any other question? Yeah, I had a question on uh, an error I was getting. And basically I got the message that it was, uh, my specification file contains a syntax error. And I was wondering whether uh, this means my JSON literally has a typo in it or whether it could also mean that my JSON is not uh, in agreement with like another file. Is that a thing or is that, that is when when you're saying your your specification.json is is it has an error, uh, that uh, almost one hundred percent there is a syntax error in your JSON. In the JSON. Okay. In the JSON. So let me let me share with you two most common <laughs> this is less common, but I, I should actually include this here. Okay, let me actually add this. You will be surprised how sensitive that sometimes JSON is. So um, usually JSON that you, for example, you have something like this, this is your first function, and then this is your second function, and da, 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 something like that. This is, I'm just concatenating JSON here. And if you forget a comment here, you will get a syntax error, okay? And the other case, which, which I, I actually help um, one student debug, this is amazing, is that everything is correct, but somehow one of the, one of the things say, uh, somewhere says, uh, why are you giving me this instead of this? Okay, somehow here is supposed to say, uh, say returns, right? Returns, and then suppose you have a uh, colon, and then you say X, Y, Z, or something like that. Okay, and, and that, that is one, one type of, uh, uh, or common, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes the, the student, he forgot to put the, put the, co the colon. And it's just, you can see on my screen, the colon is really so small. When you have a JSON, which is maybe it was 200 character, it's very easy for you to, to actually see that uh, that is uh, uh, missing. And I, I myself spent about five minutes to actually get a really close look and I found that column is a problem. So this is a curse with, with JSON, is that JSON is not telling you where the error is. It's just telling you parse error. It didn't give you a lot of hint. Not like G++. I feel that G++ gave us too much and, uh, and JSON compiler parser gave us too little. Okay, so what, what I heard from you is that the J, your, your JSON has some, some syntax error there. It cannot parse. Yeah, all right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, any other question? <clears throat> Oh, there was something in the chat. Let me see the chat. No, I will not be giving the test program. Uh, you, you decide how you want to test your program. 
I want to, uh, I actually give some test program like what I gave you in the, um, um, the original tar file, but, but I'm not saying that my tar file, the, the file I gave you with hw3 server.cp hw3 client are the best to show the result. I want you to design how you're going to show that it's really working, okay? Oh, okay. Uh, so you're saying, uh, I think RTA is saying that you can check your JSON syntax. Okay. So, so please, uh, um, let, let uh, share that link to the, either to the, um, Facebook or to the canvas or to the Piazza about that link. Okay. Wow. That's a question. Okay, let me take a look at that question. <clears throat> yeah, I was I was really busy lately. I haven't got a chance to catch up everything in Piazza. And thank you for bringing that up. You probably saw me uh, um, um, last uh, the the first screen I show. I was all doing uh, Python development last night. Okay, so now let me see this. Okay, this should be easy. This is, this is a lip curve. Can I make this smaller? Make it smaller so everybody can see that. Okay, let me see this very carefully. <clears throat> First part was able to successfully compile the program, simple client. Let me see, why is it this? I have to move closer. Okay, so uh, when you have this, um, did you have two windows running? So it, it sounds like you might not have um, server running uh, whoever asked that question, can, can someone uh, clarify um, for this particular situation? Did you run the server program on a separate terminal and let it stay there and then run this HW3 client or, or, or whatever, the simple client? Uh, can somebody unmute yourself? And, oh, okay, I, let me see the, the chat. Oh, you shouldn't do that in the same terminal. Uh, you have to do it in separate terminal because the server, if you run on the same terminal, the, the server already die when you, when you do this. So it, you need to create two terminal. Let me just show you since we're here. Let me, let me tell you what you should be doing. Uh, let me see, okay, I'll do this. It's under document, lib, cd test. Do I still have, oh, I moved somewhere else. Nah, I don't like that, okay. Where did I move it to? Cd program, did I move here? Did I put old? No, no, I don't. I don't know where I put it. We have, let me do this. Then I will know where it is. Find dot um, minus name spec dot json minus print. Go to JSON test. Yeah, it's there. I didn't have it. Okay, okay, now I saw that. Okay. Document lib slash aw3 part one. 
Okay, so there's one thing I, I do want to tell you is that there were two come in, I, I realize I help a student a lot. One is uh, the find command I just used, okay? One is the command you call find, which is very useful, but the other is even more useful is grab. I use, for example, I want to know where I define this, where do I define that, I use grab to do that. Grab and find are both very useful in, in, in doing development. Okay, so now you can see I have this program in front of me and I have uh, two executable, my client, and my server. So the thing is you have to open another window. So here is my another window. So I basically have to ask you my server like this and then stay, let it stay there and come here to do my client. And then when I did this, you will see get a notification, server got notified, means that you have something. Okay, so you have to do that, you have to keep this, because if you're doing the same terminal, you do this, it's gone. The server is gone, you will have that uh, live curl uh, arrow because it cannot get connected. There's nothing wrong with your program, it's just saying that um, it cannot connect to the server because server is dying. Okay, so this, you don't need to worry about that. This is uh, their program. I don't want to fix their program. Their program has this exception. Uh, the name was empty. But uh, if you saw this, that's normal. That means you're, 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 you're piping between your JSON RPC library, everything is working, okay? All right, so let me see the... this one. Yes, that's true. If you want to run HW3 part two, you will need three terminal. Yes, that's true. You need run one running my server, running one HW3 server, one running HW3 client, the other one run HW3 another. Uh, but if you want to do the their sample server program, just need two. Okay. Okay, let me actually see the, the message here. Okay, thank you, thank you. Now, now you see the link. This is the link to check your JSON, okay? That's very useful, thank you. What do we do with the print statement to check if our code is correct again? Oh, um, um, I usually what I did is that uh, I would just I usually just comment that out. There there's multiple way you can do this. Uh, let me let me actually show you an example. That's an excellent question, by the way. What do you do after you add this printf statement? What do you do that? Okay, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this Warfence debugger. Let's assuming I have this. I want to debug this program dot cpp, right? Okay, let me move this a little bit here. So I'm going to do a, a, a program here and assuming I want to uh, print some statements. So, so I can just say, uh, let me do a print here. Let me do a here, print here. I, I can just say, uh, I'm gonna use printf because they're already using a lot of um, printf, uh, I say I'm here. Okay, I'm just, just using something very simple. Okay, so I'm just printing a statement. I'm here. Okay, just make sure that I already reached this point. Um, and if, if my program, I debug and it's done, I can simply just do comment that out, right? I just take the program away and then that, that's fine. Okay, but a better way to do this is actually use fprintf. fprintf, I use std error instead of std out, okay? So what's the difference between std error and std out is that it's actually uh, two different output device. They both show on your screen, but when you do IO redirection, like what we did for your small program submission, that std error won't be included. So this is std arrow. It's, it's not really output to your output like a C out. You will see it on your screen, but if you do output redirection, it won't show up. So that's why we use the standard arrow, std arrow. 
this is the second way to do that. But the best way for me to do this kind of statement is actually using this particular one I call if define, uh, I said ECS 36B debugging. And then here I said, and if, and usually I do this, ECS 36B debugging. You actually will see a lot of professional programmer, they do this. So when I do this, this means that this statement will be included only if this particular string is defined. So which means that you have two different modes. You, your program can be compiled with this statement or without statement, de depending on whether this particular variable, this particular macro, not variable, uh, has been defined. And how do I control that? I usually control that in the make file. Do I have the make file here? Oh, great, I have a make file. Okay, so you see here I have a C flag. Now I'm going to show you that why the C flag is so powerful because I actually only have two lines as well. One is I call the regular line, one is I call debugging line. So in the debugging line, what I have is minus D means definition, define, and I say ECF 36B uh, debugging. So I do like this. So if, I, if the program is already correct, I'm going to run the program. I want to get rid of all this uh, extra message. I just do the first line. C flag is equal to minus G. Uh, and then I, I basically get everything done. But if I want to do debugging, then I just simply go to my make file and just put a, that, that pound sign is a, is, a, is a common line, is a common symbol. It means the whole line is neglected. And then just uncomment this one. So when I have this, this line will be included. So essentially you're going to put a lot of this kind of printf statement everywhere in your system. Your, your program has maybe 200 plates, you're adding different kind of debugging. And I just use this if def and if to to separate them out and then using the, the compiler flag minus D flag, minus D flag to basically uh, um, decide whether I want those messages to be included. In fact, you can define multiple level. I mean, at some point we have like a debugging level one, debugging level two, debugging level three. You can have a so many different level and then, and then if you go to debugging level three, you probably print everything. But if you want to, do debugging level one, maybe you only see certain things. So you can actually define all kinds of symbol using the same mechanism and such that your code will be ready to be uh, rebuilt based on the control about your flag in the make file. Yeah, this is also a very powerful thing for you to use make file because it really helps us to do that, okay? All right, any question before I move to the next thing in ch on chat? All right, so let me do this. I think we're okay with this one, right, Samir? It's okay. Uh, print out what the functions return. Okay, somebody somebody say that. Okay, that's good. It's in the same terminal. Okay, this is fine. I'm having the same problem part two when trying to compare person. Yeah, okay, you need three terminal. Is this part okay? I think somebody already answered, and uh, I think Alexis already say that you need three terminal. Okay, good, all right. Oh, you're helping each other. I mean, maybe they should, you, you don't need me here anymore. Okay, what does this arrow mean? CLAN, that's compiler arrow, cannot specify minus O when generating multiple output files. Okay. Um, Sesame, you have to send me your make file. This to me is a make file error. I think I saw one of this yesterday as well. Okay, it's, it's just the, the something to do with the dash O flag and after that target the dash O flag has, has uh, 
So it's me saying you two are comparing stuff. Sesame, can you actually uh okay, you have this, but can you show me the rule? Show you show me the rule, uh like this part. Let me actually go back to here. Can you show me a rule like uh, um for example, like how do you do your rule like uh, to make HW3 server? Is this when you do HW3 server or HW3 client? Or is HW3 client? Can you show me this line, this, this rule? This is one make file rule. Oh, I saw that, okay, thank you. Okay, let me see. Okay, wow, you send me everything. Let me see that. Where is your, uh, how do you, uh, how do you define your, your core OBJ? Where's, where's your core OBJ? What is the core OBJ? Yeah, this looks fine. You have this and why this is giving you error. And, uh, let me let me take a close look. Sorry. Oh, I know. I saw the problem. Um, you see that here, um, um, Samir. Here in the client rule. Uh, wait a minute. So here you have OBJ. Wait a minute. Yeah, here you have OBJ, right? But here you have include. INC. So this part should be shadow underscore OBJ as well. Does that make sense? So what I'm saying is that I saw a few problems like like this place, HW3, uh, this place, HW3 server. This is core OBJ. This should be shadow OBJ as well. So, so you uh, is not included. So, I saw some of your rule. You're mixing INC, which is INCS, which is include file, which is .h file, with object file. That's why he doesn't like that. Does that make sense? Okay. So, sounds okay. Yeah, I think that that will definitely trigger that error. Yeah, that's a make file issue. The dot, dot h and dot o are, are are putting together because it cannot it cannot uh, um, handle um, dot h file in, when you try to link things together. It needs to be everything has to be dot o or library. Okay. All right. Do we have any other questions? Okay, you're Hi, welcome. I, yes, I have a question. Sure, Jerry. So, uh, I've done all the implementation and compiling. It has no error, and I can run my Homo three server, Homo three another, and mm -hmm. Homo three client. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, all the functions are working. But between the, so can I take a shot and send it to chat so you can see what's the problem? Sure. So this is my Homo three server. Probably okay, it, while but... you're doing that, I'm trying to answer the question to Brian. So, oh, so Brian, no, no, no problem. So you're, you're sending your screen because Brian asked a question on Zoom as well. Um, uh, okay, that, that is a different issue. So Brian, um, the, if your client output the result, so, which means I assume the result is, is good, but you want to see something else on the server side, make sure that result is really from the server. So you, you might want to consider to add the printf statement, more printf or more CL statement in hw3 uh, server.cdp and hw3 
uh, another .cpp to be able to see that when the client issue the call, it's really, it's really they are getting something. So it's, it's just printing more to make their process more transparent to us. So we will, we have more confidence about they're actually doing something. Okay, and try try to do that. And because for 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 them to print, you, I assume that either you already add a print statement and they didn't print anything, which that will be a problem. We need to figure that out. Uh, or you you haven't put enough print statement. And if you put more print statement, that will actually help you to, to resolve some of the issue. Okay, so, um, so uh, Jerry, when, when you have this, uh, wait a minute, yep. what is this? Okay. Yeah, I sent my whole message to the Yeah, yeah but, but, but I think the first one is already tell me a lot of things. So this okay, one okay. Is, is saying that the, it's a lip curl error again. This is basically yep. saying that uh, it cannot find a server to connect. It cannot okay. find a server to connect. It might be a poor number issue. Okay, it might be a poor uh, number issue. Okay. It might, because we're actually having two different poor numbers. Uh, yeah, I got you. you. Okay, the other thing, which is also interesting, mentioned by another student, uh, I forgot that whether he's here or not, he or she is here, is that if you're using CSIF machine, let me think about this way, you're using CSIF machine, and you have a two student from ECF36B are using the same machine, and both of them are running, and both of them are using this port 8385 or whatever, Guess what? Oh, yeah. They were messed up your poor number. <laughs> oh, no, but I'm other... compiling on my computer, not on CSI. No, you if you're on your computer, it's a different issue. But but if you're if you're using CSIF machine, I'm I'm talking to the whole class, meaning oh, okay. that if you use CSIF, you have to watch out. Maybe there's some other student also doing the same homework there. Okay. Okay. So for for this error message I thought is that um, so there is, there is two parts that's kind of tricky in this class is that when we create an object, let me actually use my code as example. Let me use my um, um, hw3 client.cpp. So you can see that in my code, okay, and I, I create a bunch of objects. And each of them has a different poor number and by using local holes and things like that, right? So, um, so if, if you're running a, your, your, on your own machine, a MacBook or a window, this problem should, should be easier to deal with because they are all local host and the poor number 8384. I mean, if, if you first make sure that Everything is 8384 means just client server and don't worry about the 8385 yet. And make sure that problem goes away. If, if, if you have two, just HW3 client server, you already have this problem, then that's something you need to worry. But if you can make sure that at least between server and client, you don't have this problem, then you add the HW3 another and make sure you use the H8385 uh, correctly in all the places. So one of the things I help the other student to do that is I want to find all the places you're using this number. So you just do a grab, 8385 star.cpp. You see that I have one, two, three, four. I have a four different places across three different files, three different places I'm using 8385, right? And then you can do 8384 as well. It tell you that where you use 8384. And then I don't believe any other file like Daesh file, they shouldn't matter. So it's only those three uh, CPP file, you should see this 8385. Uh, you can use a server. I mean, you don't have to use 8384, 8385. You can use 8386, 8387. That's okay, that's your choice. Okay, and try, try to, play around because the error message you show me is just saying that uh, the, the port is not, not match with the other side or the server is not running or something like that, okay? Okay, thank you. 
You're welcome. <clears throat> right, any other question? Ali, you have a question? Yeah, yeah, sorry. I was uh, trying to unmute. <laughs> no problem. Um, <laughs> I had a question about, uh, let me read out the error. The error was basically saying that my shadow person type uh, was not defined and it was trying to get me to retype shadow person in in my .cpp file as shadow flight. That, that that's, that's re sounds like is related to what I talk about is a, it's a matching, it's a matching uh, problem. Uh, okay. So um, where do you get this arrow? Do you get this arrow in shadow underscore person dot CPP or get yeah. this arrow HW3? Okay, if it's a shadow underscore person dot CPP, let me try to just give you a, a few idea before, uh, you can send me your code, I can help you mm -hmm. to take a look, but I don't want you to show uh, to everybody here. Um, so number one, the shadow underscore person dot CPP, they should include, they should include shadow underscore person dot H. Okay, that's, that's one thing you have, right? Oh. And then, oh. oh, you don't have that? No, no, I do, I just saw it. Okay. And then inside shadow person dot H, you should have class shadow underscore person defined. Okay. So under I mean, shadow, Person dot h right under person dot h. Have... Okay. What should I be defining? No, you should define class shadow person. Yeah. Let me actually show you something. So, for example, my shadow person dot h. You see that I have defined class shadow person. Class shadow person. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Okay. So, based on what you tell me, I will suggest to do the grab. To do this grab shadow. I know I'm the canceled script and everything. Um, star dot h. Okay, if you do shadow fly star dot h, the only file that you have the word shadow fly is under shadow fly dot h. And if you do shadow fly cpp, the only file that should have it is, is uh, uh, where, where do I do that? Okay, I do it here, cpp. Of course, you should have a shadow fly that CPP has this shadow fly mm. keyword, and you have uh, HW3 client, HW3 client, HW3 server, but okay. nothing else. So, right. can you do a shadow uh, yeah. shadow fly? Do this two line. Yeah. What do you have? Okay. Should I start with the first shadow person? Or? Sure, sure. Do a shadow fly. Shadow underscore fly star dot H. Oh, every right, single right. Shadow. Shadow H. All right, uh, I'm getting it in uh, shadow flight dot H. Right. Okay, so that's correct, right? Right. And okay, now, so now you do the second line grab shadow, shadow fly sorry. CPP star dot CPP. Um, is in uh let's see so it's in shadow person dot cpp and shadow flight dot cpp see that's a problem and why kind. why would you have that in shadow person dot cpp yeah. you understand what i'm saying you see mm -hmm. when i do the shadow fly start dot cpp i don't have shadow person here Oh, but I thought because in, in shadow person dot cpp I have the include statement. But you shadow person dot cpp shouldn't include shadow fly dot h. It should include shadow person dot h. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Right. That that's that's the issue. Yeah. Yeah. Right. That's why I, I just want to show you that it's mm -hmm. mismatching, and yeah. also use grab will help you to to know where your keyword, because sometimes they're so similar, right? It's all shadow and sometimes yeah, yeah. we just type it wrong. And so this, this tool yeah, grab help you to, to resolve. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep, all right, thanks. You're welcome. Okay, let me see, do I have any other issue on the chat? 
I have a question. Go ahead. Go ahead, Thomas. Uh, for uh, the small program, um, I was trying to do um, exercise 11.01, and I was still getting the mismatch with record. Is uh -huh. that solved? That is a little bit of a mystery. I actually, yesterday I just tested and uh, um, it works for me. So I, I'm, I'm actually a little bit, uh, um, okay, hold on. Let me take a look at this very quickly and I want to show you instead of lip curl arrow, it says lip curl arrow 52. Okay. Um, um, scissor. I, I think uh, I'm, I'm not familiar with this. I have to take a look at your code, but I'm guessing it's also to do with, with, the, um, with the connection arrow. It shouldn't be, I mean, I, if you're running CSIF machine, it might be conflict with other thing. Uh, let me take a look at this very carefully, just grade it. Um, the three part. Yes, yeah, uh, semi, yeah, this is correct. So I'm actually going to do the small program uh, that Thomas, you asked me. I'm going to ask you to help me. That's, that's great that you're here because, uh, because now you can, you can help, help us to debug the, the, the things like what we did the other day, okay? So I'm going gotcha. to ask, uh, I'm going to, let me, let me do this. Let me close, finish this uh, first. Okay, fine. SSH, US, Cyrus, CS. Davis. CD, B, CD, small proven. Okay, so I need to have another one. Um, okay, so now I'm actually in front of me. Um, can you submit your program right now to hit the line? Okay, thank you. Is this you, the, the VSID? It looks right. Yeah, as me. <laughs> okay, good. All right, thank you. Let me take a look at your output. So let me see what's what's going on here. So twenty six. This is you. This is you. This is you as well. And I'm getting. Yeah, I believe this one is this. No, this one's not this one. So this is your output I'm getting. It looks yeah. perfectly clean to me, actually. And uh, the XID is this. Okay, I'm going to do one thing. That's fine. Okay, we're doing debugging. So I'm going to show you what I did debugging the way I actually presented earlier. I'm going to do adding printf statement, okay? Dot CPP, okay? So in my program, I know that there is a place match, okay? There is a place, you see, I actually add this here, 444, you know that I'm doing those kind of thing. Um, program submission, I want to make this a little bit bigger so I can see. So everybody can see that. Okay. So what I did here is program submission. I first check whether the input URL is okay. If you actually done this before. <clears throat> So you haven't, you, you, you never, okay, let me print a statement here, just, just in case. Print um, F. Shreyas uh, suggested that maybe I did the URL wrong and, it, and that fixed my error. Oh, you actually fixed your error? Yeah, it's just successful now. Oh, gosh, 
This is URL. Let me see why your URL is not right. What's wrong with your URL? What did you fix? I mean, I just copied and pasted it because before I kind of manually typed it. <laughs> okay, all right, that's why. That's why I, I, I mismatch. So when I say mismatch, I should actually tell the code whether it's a mismatch URL or whether it's a mismatch result, right? But I guess I didn't do that. That's my, my bad. I should provide more message. Okay. Let me actually see that. Uh, is there a way I can tell you? I can send a different result. Okay, I need to fix this. I need to fix this such that um, I will, the, the people who submit homework know that it's a URL problem or it's a, it's a, it's a result problem. Okay, all right, thank you. So the problem is being taken care of, right? Uh, right. By yeah. Shia is helping you. Thank you very much, Shia. Okay, any other question? Let me pull back. The... And, and those are worth 20% uh, of your grade and there's 30 of them, right? 35 of them? 35 of them, yeah, okay. 35. I, I think I'm not going to ask you to do all the way to 35. You can do like uh, uh, up, to, up to 30 or 25 to 30, that would be good enough to get the 30 point. It's, it's that 20% is really try to encourage you, make, make sure that you're, you're following the, the you're, you're at least testing those, those uh, example in the book. Yeah. Okay. All right. Wait, was the URL arrow for the small? Okay. So, Kelly, your issue is what? Uh, let me see. Able to run this program, but I'm not able to print at the very end, even though I have the printf statement. Okay. Okay, why, what do you mean by that? Let me, let me actually take a look at my HW3 client. Let me make this window smaller first. For some reason, Zoom is doesn't allow. Oh, I can I can still do that. Okay, okay, fine. I'm happy. So you're saying that at the end. It will not print. Is that right? Because you're, for example, you're adding some printf statement. That doesn't make sense. You should be able to print. Can you, can you check that maybe there is some return condition that it never reached? It, it sounds like uh, that statement, that printf statement is unreachable or is unreachable under certain cases. Okay, that's, that's my thought. Um, uh, if you still have that problem, let me know because I really have to look at your program. Okay, I, I, okay, you sent me a message yesterday. Okay, I'm not gonna show your messages here, okay? Okay, any other question? Okay, Julie, I'm looking at your message. Well, try to use make my mic file does not recognize my, I believe you said shadow fly and shadow person. Show that in the make file. Okay. Um, can you show me the rule that uh, the the rule like uh, let me just show you my example so you know that whether you're 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 placing it in the right right place. For example, we're talking about shadow uh, fly and shadow person dot o right. We're talking about this too. And so now I call it shadow objects. Okay, I call it shadow object. So inside here, you can see my make file. I, I have an H3, I just use H, HW3 server as example. So I should have this shadow object here as a dependency, which means that the pers uh, shadow person.o and the shadow fly.o is going to be put in here. 
but also it's need to put it here as well. So there are two places you need to put the shadow object, which means shadow person.o and per, uh, shadow fly.o in both the dependency and also the command to fire. Okay, um, um, Julia, that's, that's uh, that, have, you, have you done that for both? Okay, I don't, I guess Julia is muted somewhere. Let me take a look at here. Is the server supposed to print if that the both persons are? Uh, Joel, um, I guess it will only print when, in my client program, it will only print when, when you have a conflict of interest. So, which means that both person are the same, which was with the same VSID, it will come there. How to implement one person constructor with six parameters. Okay, I'll do that part. Uh, Julia, I have to take a look at your make file. Okay, send me your make file, I can take a look at that. So, this is question respond to Weipen. Okay, so he is asking, how do I actually implement the person constructor for six parameter? So let me do this. So I first go to person.h. I believe I have that already there. Okay, so you, um, so you can see here that uh, in, I have a three constructor, that one of the constructor, the third constructor has six, parameter one two three four five six so this is i just declare the the function prototype for my constructor but i didn't have an implementation for the constructor so i'm going to then go to person.cpp to see the implementation and the implementation is Coming here, okay, here, this one has four. Yeah, this one has six. Okay, so this constructor works this way. This is six argument constructor. So I have a six argument, like what I declared earlier, and I put the four of them to call the core object constructor. This is inheritance, so you can do this. And then inside, I basically set the other two. Okay, that's, that's what I did. Okay. All right. Let me see my chat again. Where's my chat window? Okay, I'm running out of battery. Okay. Okay, Julia, you fixed it. That's great. All right. So, uh, um, if you have any question, just just uh, contact me via email or, or Facebook. I think I, I respond to Facebook a little bit faster than email. Um, but um, please ask me, especially related to homeware assignment number three, part one. Um, you should you should ask me today, okay? And and the rest we can handle. We have a few more days to handle that. All right. Okay. Thank you for coming. I'm going to unshare my screen. You're very welcome, everybody. I'm going to unshare my screen and uh, end this meeting. Bye. And then I will send out the, the video.